And for those of you who aren't. And it's not stalking. <laughs> for those of you, you took the words, for those of you who aren't a stalker like David and you want a, a related approach, is, it works, he's here, right? It works for him. Another way to look at it is to try to touch them in a different way each time, specifically add something of value each time, something different. With each email that you send, it, it could be something that you, comes out of today's newspaper. Don't send them the same message, identically the same message, every day or every week for six months, because that is stalking. That's not quite what, well. <laughs> but what you can do, here's a free tip, is to go to Google Alerts, yeah. Google Alerts, and set it up for what's hot in your industry now, whether it's uh, a uh, downturn, a recession, pick the keywords that resonate with you and your boss's boss. I, pick, I, I do Nortel, so every day I get Nortel news, <laughs> good or bad. Yeah, and if you're, you can Google, you can set it up for your name, so I know when someone's put me in the press, for example, and sometimes it's good, it's, it's normally good, but what's coming up in the news every day that you can share with someone that makes you look like a connected person or a connector, and it's an excuse to get in touch with your network, too. I just saw this on Google Alerts today. You, don't, you can maybe tell them how you found it, but the point is to find the stuff, and it's done for you, and it's free. So Google Alerts can help you. It gives you an excuse every day to contact somebody in your network with something that's relevant. People don't want to hear from you if you're a beggar, a supplicant. Yep. They'll stop returning your calls. Yep. If it's Frank who's been unemployed for nine months, no one wants to hear from Frank. He's a downer. He's, 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 you know, it's just, it we don't have any Franks. No, we don't. But you know a Frank, and you don't want to mm -hmm. be Frank. What you want to do is be the person who adds something of value. With it. They want to take your calls because last week you turned them onto a new website that saved them a half million dollars. So they're going to take your calls if you add value with each touch. Obviously, you can't do this with 100 different companies, but you shouldn't be targeting 100 different companies. You cannot target 100 different companies. You should have a short lift of 5 to 10. Maybe. The Gartman letter, you know, Gartman in USA, mm -hmm. he has his letter every day. You have all executives want to read. Exactly. Yeah. If you, you, you want to be the guy yeah. or, or gal who's whose emails they look forward to and forward on to others at right. the bottom. P.S. Please forward this to anybody. But that's that, copyrighted. $400 a month for that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that. So, so, something to think about. So, who wouldn't pay 400 bucks today to get a job tomorrow? Who would pay $400 today, cash, out of the pocket now to get a job tomorrow that they wanted? Boom, done. So, great example, great example. Thank you. You mean by the, the person that you're sending them by the subscription for them? Well, no, no, but That's you, you, but you can, do. but you can, yeah. but you can get with the Google News alerts. I got to do this all the time with my That's clients, right? Yeah. The yeah, Google, Google News alerts. alerts I get free, the stuff. Free, free. I add my three sentences on top of it. Boom, out it goes. When I call, my calls are taken by everybody except Donald Trump. It's a long story. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> the stalking jokes <laughs> came in. <laughs> all right. Okay. Big secret that we're going to reveal to you now, the, the two ways to find a job, they are it finds you or you find it, and if there's any doubt, see rule one again. These are the only two ways to get a job. 2B could be the jobs created for you on the spot, I suppose, yeah. but it's really, it's simple, but it's not easy. So I don't want you to agonize over going, you can only ride a horse in one direction, and here there are only really two directions you could be going in any one time. You find the job or it finds you. Now David's background in the military helped him to write guerrilla marketing for job hunters in a really effective tone because he's actually got, don't have combat experience, but more than I do. So, I mean, he, he can talk at length about the force multiplier effect. Guerrillas do both here. They don't just look for a job, but they also have their LinkedIn profile snazzy, and they're trying to be out there in play and have the job find them while they're also looking for the job. So if you're doing both things at once with total effectiveness, you can't help but get hired faster. And the math is really easy. You know, if, you, if there are 100 people that apply for a job that you saw in the newspaper, for example, and you're one of them, you're one out of 100, right? If you follow up, as Martin teaches people to follow up with their resume, well, your odds are now one out of 50. If you send a second resume because you're not sure <laughs> that they got the first one with a slight different twist, well, you're now three out of 100. What's that, 33%? You know, one out of mm -hmm. 30. Wait, you can tell I'm not the math guy, right? But you get the point. You can do multiple things, and you should do multiple things to make sure you're focusing in on those opportunities and those, as the marketing people say, the touch points to make sure you're top of mind. Yeah, the, the easy way to think about multiple, uh, the force multiplier effect, it's another way of saying synergy, basically. Um, who here would, if you're of our age, 40s and mm -hmm. up, when you were younger, who here would have wanted to have Ringo Starr play your high school prom? <laughs> All right, how about the Beatles? Oh, yeah. Right? What's the difference? He's a musician. Well, with John, Paul, and George, there was a certain synergy there. How many of them had super wildly successful careers on their own? John and, and Paul did well, but nothing equaled the White Album or Abbey Road. It's because there was synergy. The whole was greater than the parts. 
So when, you're, when you've got, we, we've talked earlier, if you've got the blog, the resumes on target, you're networking effectively here, you've got your 30 second pitch. When you're doing all these things correctly, all of a sudden you've got synergy uh, and you can smash through the barriers that much faster. So think synergy uh, as another way of looking at the force multiplier. Oh, I love this slide. This is, this is what you see in the Globe and Mail or the Toronto Star, the, the stuff above the water. We all know the stats, right? But this is just so visual. 5% of the jobs, was it Martin, 10% of the jobs that are advertised? 10%, yeah. And most people spend their time, you know, opening the newspaper, rushing at those things, going to the job boards, uh, going after those things. And, you know, you're competing. When you do that, you're competing. And you're one of many. You're better off to be one of one. <laughs> this is what you're going to see for the next couple of weeks underneath of that, that water. Most of you won't, won't be here by the time, you know, next month rolls around if you listen to our advice tonight. Fly away. Okay, the hidden job market, why is it hiding? It's not really hiding, but there are many ways a job is created, and oftentimes a job is created first in someone's mind, I got a, you know, an employer's mind. I got a problem, I got to fix it, but they don't have time to spec it out, they don't have time to go looking, they don't have time to do a whole bunch of things, so the job stays in their head, okay? Or there's something the company wants to do, but they don't want anybody else to know about it because it's a competitive thing, so the job stays in their head. None of those jobs are advertised, right? Okay. So what else happens? Here's what happened in the last recession to me. I got this wonderful client, loved him to death, hired me to do a VP of uh, engineering that had VSAT, very small um, uh, aperture thingies, okay? Uh, <laughs> they're Deweys, not really thingies. Anyway, I needed a guy that had actually set these up in Mongolia. VSAT's in Mongolia. There's three guys in Canada. They're all out west. None of them moved to Ottawa. So I go back to the client after four months, painful, four months, I said, listen, VSAT is 4% of the business, microwave is 35 or 40% of the business, let's focus on the microwave, forget about the VSAT, it was a nice to have, but we're not going to do it. He said, great, but listen, David, you know, you've been at it for a while, so we want you to run an ad. This is 2002. I said, listen, this is not going to work. Um, he said, no, no, we want you to run an ad. I said, fine. You write the ad, I'll approve it, you place it, and I got a week. We'll do it, run it next Wednesday. It was the Wednesday we're talking. I got a week to go find my guy. I know where my guy is. I mean, I wasn't stupid why I asked him to have a microwave. So I went and talked to the guy and I said, listen, next Wednesday you're going to do an interview with me at this company for this job. You'll love it, all this kind of stuff. So the Wednesday rolls around. It's 8 o'clock in the morning. We're doing the interview. The president loves him. By 9 o'clock, he's running out his boardroom to go get <laughs> VPs to come back and meet this guy because they've been looking for him for two years. It wasn't just my four months. And uh, then he gets another VP. And by, by, by noon time, we're bringing in lunch because we're not letting this guy go. Okay? And the HR director comes to me and says, listen, we got about 900 resumes <laughs> that have been emailed in so far. And he said, what do you want me to do with them? I said, just keep counting. <laughs> We're in the middle of this. So we do lunch, we do the other thing. So it's 4 o'clock. We let him go home. But the agreement is, the offer's in his hand. And the gentleman's agreement, and we all shook on it. The gentleman's agreement was, he's going to take this job as long as his wife says it's okay. <laughs> Great. So he goes home. He took the job, by the way. That's not the part that's scary. The war story is, 5 o'clock, the president comes to me and says, we got about 3,000 some odd resumes. Ended up with 3,911, something like that. And he says, uh, what are you going to do with them? I said, me. <laughs> I'm done here. <laughs> My guy is going to come back tomorrow and take this job. My job is finished. You get your HR department to call them. <laughs> Three weeks later, they got four lawsuits on their hand. Four lawsuits, 3,911 people, four lawsuits. Nobody believed that they had put an ad in a paper and found the guy the same day. And, and you're not going to explain to 3,911 people the same story, right? Well, we really started this three months ago. So what happened was, in Ottawa, the word got around. If you got a job, God, don't tell anybody. Hire a recruiter. Hello. <laughs> we got really busy. Ottawa didn't stop hiring. People just started... People just stopped reading about the opportunities, especially the senior ones, in the newspaper. <coughs> Did it mean the city came to a halt? No. It meant that the jobs had gone underground. And this, this company is quite well known. And the president talked about the horror story with a bunch of his buddies, who talked about the horror story with a bunch of their buddies, and pretty soon this was the talk of the town. And the jobs all went down like this. And you can watch. You can pull up the stats from the Ottawa Citizen and see the career ad um, revenue just folds it near nothing. So what happens in a recession? Listen, if it's a four, if six percent of people are unemployed, that's the official number. 
It means 94% of people are employed, exactly. <coughs> Businesses still want to go on. In fact, they're more competitive than ever. When you go into a recession, what does the CEO want? A better sales guy, a better marketing guy. Not nobody, they don't want to die. So all those kinds of jobs go underground. This is what a gorilla's job hunting market space looks like. The other side of that iceberg thingy. <laughs>